there, put your hand in there, would you? Good news, people! The drill bar just wasn't working very well. No one said farming was a glamorous job. Good morning, everyone. If you have not already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, ring the little bell, you know, okay, so this guy's video every Tuesday, Friday, and sometimes we do a Sunday video. I have two problems today. First problem is, oh, you're about to be amazed. <laughs> Holy moly, I'm full of slurry. Full and full of slurry. I've never actually dropped this since we uh, put the uh, separator in. Mm -hmm. I want to drop it so we get no top on it. But anywho, uh, we need to review the separator. Um, so that's a bit of a problem, but we have a solution. Have a solution. Oh, uh, more from yesterday. They had four and a half cubes of concrete if I could take it in 10 minutes. So I took it and I put it down that side. I said, if you ever need concrete like that, you pay like a fraction of the price because it's a rejected order. It's great, so we take it, do that. Oh, this is gonna be my solution to my problem. This is a slurry tanker with a dribble bar. I'll explain. So, my second problem is, and it's a pretty, it's a pretty big problem. So, we chopped on Tuesday. Oh, please stop, please stop, please stop. Oh, yeah, boy. We chopped on Tuesday. Today, I need something out there. Today is Thursday. I was gonna spread some soy yesterday, but uh, when we start chopping, we started to not do other jobs, so we had a full day yesterday of just catching up with everything, making sure everything's scraped up, bedded up to the nines. You know how it is? Problem is, I had an next door neighbour who has bought a house next to one of the fields, and I want to spray slurry in that field. They don't know that, but they know I've chopped. And they've asked me, can you not spread slurry in that till next Thursday, so seven days, until my friends from America have come to stay and they leave, I'm guessing. They didn't ask me, they asked the farm shop. The farm shop were quite good and said, we'll bought a place. They love seeing the countryside, but they don't want to smell a spray, smell of slurry. We're not going to get into it. The reason we want to spread slurry in that field is that field's under countryside stewardship scheme. I can't graze it for a certain amount of time. I've got five and a half months it needs to be not grazed. So my plan is to spread slurry in that field. We've got no nitrogen, like um, bag fertilizer left and then try and get a fourth cut out of it before the end of October. If I don't get it, I don't get it, I miss it. But I need to get slurry on it to get the grass going, to get the grass moving. I wanted to use the splash plate. But because my neighbors come to that, I've not seen him yet. I, I do know who it is. I've not seen it yet. I'm not gonna use a splash plate. I'm gonna use the dribble bar. I was gonna dribble bar everywhere else, but I was gonna splash plate that one because the dribble bar sometimes can leave lines. So much better to graze after, but the splash plate doesn't lead the line. Maybe not with the new separator anyway. Um, but we're gonna dribble bar it on anyway. So I think that's a good compromise. So the smell shouldn't be as bad. It's better for the environment as well. The ground should be okay, I'm hoping. I think it's quite nice for me to do so. There we go. When you've not used a macerator for a long time, on the dribble bar, sometimes it can stick. Gotta spread slurry in that field. This first field I wanna get on because I want it to get growing, yeah? My other plan is to start from the other end of the field and not close to the houses. Probably gonna do the whole field in the next two days anyway. But that's my compromise, and I think I think that's a pretty good compromise. I think I could have just splash played it right next to the house. Anyway, we'll find out. We've got obviously a hell of a lot of slurry to go at. I want to do a lot of the grazing ground as well with dribble bar. I won't put it as thick on. We're probably going to put this quite thick on because it is going to be watery stuff as well. Because the amount of rain we've had in July and August, we've not had a chance to spread it. You've seen it in other videos. We've actually just been putting it back from the other place. But it's tell you what is one good thing though not having to go into the reception pit and everything's in one. Oh, dreams can come true. Da, 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 da. Right, let's go spread some slurry, baby. One of my favorite jobs, you'll see in the John Deere. I'll explain that later. See you in a bit. So for some reason, I'm having a bit of an issue with the macerator. So it's stopping turning, I don't know why. Well, I found it. I wish this didn't start, because now it's going to be covered in poo. Oh, 
outlet for me. See, it's not turning. I'm definitely under there, would you? I did 50k bot. It just it keeps stopping on me on the master. I don't know why. A time ago, I thought maybe some string was getting tied up, tied, tied, and it was getting to the north. Then you go backwards. But it's not that, because that's running freely now. What a good spanner that is. There's one issue as well. My cone came off from PTO, so PTO doesn't have a cover on it. And I know that's highly dangerous. PTO's no cover is one of the most dangerous things ever. Um, I'll order a new one today at lunch. Too many accidents with bad PTOs, but obviously I'm running it. I don't go anywhere near that PTO. I don't have to go near that PTO. So I'll order another one for tomorrow. A bit the plan. So what I'm going to do, which I always forget to do, I'm going to go on the Mastec app. I'm always really curious. Right, okay. So, application meters, 7.5, size of tank is 2250. And how long is it taking to... So I need to time how long it takes me to empty the slurry. So I'm going to do just finish this last little bit. Starting. Oh, uh, try that one. Not had a complaint yet, and this is my fourth load. Timing. I think why I like tanking and mowing, my two favourite jobs. It's just like painting. It's like painting a field. Oh, the, uh, the macerator seems to be working fine now. Not a problem with it since, touch wood. Am I pretty much organic now I've done this? No nitrogen, only slug. I am organic. And we're getting to the end now. It's nearly... Yeah, turn that off. Turn you off. Right, so 2.98. Soup 98, that's 58. I'm going to figure that out whilst we're loading, because there's no point me stopping. Might as well do it whilst I'm stood watching it load up. I'm going to put three minutes, because it was about, it was, it was about 2.55, so... Thank you. Three minutes. How many gallons per acre do you want to put on? Say 3,000. Submit recommended speed is 8.09 kilometers an hour, and this is in miles per hour, so we need to work that out. Five miles an hour. I think I was going three. It's got a little bit quicker. I wonder if I put 4,000 gallons to the acre. Submit, which is 6.07. Oh, 3.7. So I need to be going about 4 miles per hour, really, to do a good job. Uh, three minutes to unload some bad, is it? I took that cone out, you might have seen it in a video before, it was like a restricted cone. It goes like that, so it restricts how much thing can come out. I took it out, so I'm just gonna speed is your favour of any of these jobs. But yeah, that's interesting. Isn't it? So I need to be going anywhere between four and five and a half K to be putting on three to four. So about three and a half thousand gallons to the acre, which I think is that that'd be plenty. got reseeded, well just overseeded, you would have seen it in the video. And I was wondering, what are those lines? I was thinking, did the overseed just not work, like, and only work by half of it or anything? Like, genuinely in my head. And then quickly figured out, so the lines, so it was mown on a Sunday and it was picked up on a Tuesday. We didn't tear it out, yeah? And that green is where the space was, where the grass wasn't, and that is where the grass was. So in two days, it greened up already. And obviously with all this organic matter, do we will green up again. The other thing as well, I did do that side and then I felt like I'll be running down that road edge the whole time. And we, when we spread the slurry, we like to like kind of drive across the field in like different spots and don't ruin just one area. Kind of, you can run, run over a piece of grass once and it will forgive you. Keep running over it a few times and it's not going to forgive you. Keep running over a hundred times by the time you, let's say you do 25 loads, one, two, three tyres, it's 
so there's 75 and obviously you've got to go in and out so it's 150 times driving on it my logic says go from that edge, edge. hopefully my neighbor's not going to be really annoyed obviously i've got to do my job and i want to do the whole field anyway so even if i started that field by the end of the day i'd be there so i might as well have started should have done should have could have would have i might as well have started here and then i would be down the field by now the smell of guns so the macerator wasn't working in that drone show we did before don't know why it just seems to not work when um, i want it to work well it seems to not work on the drone shot where it looked the best don't know why probably asking what i'm doing so yesterday when we were tanking you see we fixed it already i'm sure that's meant to be there i hope so because if not i'm in a real cock up the pipe squeezes in imagine you're sucking through a hole like that you're gonna suck a lot imagine you're trying to suck a hole like that you're not gonna suck a lot so i'm gonna hammer that back down and i've got some tap just tape in french get to there because dad's already taped in and fingers crossed it'll work i really hope it's not meant to be there because if so i a bad cock up here So that is this field's done. You can see like where it's like, I missed a little bit. There's like a little bit of missing. There's a line of the first load I did. And that first load was actually from over the road. We smoked out the bit of channels we've got in front of the big sheds over there. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? How thin it was. And this is all separated more, pretty much. Yeah, because we're sending it all back. And it's like a really good consistency. It's slurry. There's no like fiber in there, which is really good because the fiber is what killed the grass. This is actually slurry, so it's liquid. Um, yeah, the field's done, nicely done. I don't know how many loads we did. It would be interesting to find that out. One field done, probably about four to attack, and we probably knocked it down a third of a ring, maybe half a ring, if that. So we've got loads to go at. You see that I just did the headlands at the end as well. I like to get every part of the field, and let's be honest, we ain't gonna run out of slurry. Anyway. Four days since we mowed, and gla glass, glass is interesting. Grass is absolutely flying. It's not too good on the headlands, it always gets a lot of traffic. But grass is like, it must be four inches thick already. Mad. We used to double up. I'm not going to double up in here because I want to graze this field. And that is what a dribble bar is fantastic for grazing afterwards. It doesn't just cover the leaf, the leaf of the grass plant in slurry. It's so good. So I've got a nice layer of slurry on. I'm going about, say that, I'm going about three miles an hour, so I need to work out what that is in jail. I'm putting on plenty, but you can't really tell behind me. It doesn't look proper hooey in a mess. Yeah, this, this field always takes a few loads. 30, 40, 50, I've got no idea. So we'll just get it on, we'll graze it later on. Uh, the cows have got a field in front of this, say cows, just bullying heifers are gonna go. Bullying heifers are in a, like, a field past this one, and they've got this, the next one, then they'll come into it. I can't believe I was growing, which is amazing. Do we try a fourth cut everywhere? We're not doing it. We are back. Let's listen to a bit of country music. I'm into country music at the moment. It's a bad, um, what's it called? Habit of caught off Mark, groundworker Mark. So many Marks. Can't live life without Mark. Oh, and she is starting to rain. I mean, sorry, we'll get washed in. 
Oh, do you know what I have as well? I have a field of straw out and it's raining. The bales, well, I've got nowhere to put the straw. The bale's still in the bale position. I've got muck that needs cutting out. I might ring for it and see if we can shift that bale this week. Because I've got nowhere to put my straw and it's getting wet. Look at the grass. It's seven days. Seven days of growth. And now we're putting a thin layer of slurry up. I say thin layer, we're currently going three miles an hour. We're probably going for about four and a half thousand gallons to the acre. Our slurry is nearly, normally, it's normally, I've not worked out separated, I've not worked out bubbled. It's normally worth about 20 units per gallon, I'm sure. So that worked out about 90 units per acre. What we're not. That's a lot of units. I could be wrong with that. Sucking. Right. Woohoo! We can see the bottom ring. Well, not the bottom, the middle ring. This is good news, people. Good news. Happy with that. A lot more to go at, but good start. We've not emptied this, you know, since we've done that. We just need to get rid of all our muck. That's going to be a Thursday job, we think. The weather is definitely taking a change. So whilst we're tanking, the drill bar just wasn't working very well. Found the reason. So it's just poking out in there. Can we see? Like always have it turned off. Never have the keys in the tractor. I hate proper hate anything to do with this stuff. Like anything like this. So the brick that I've chucked away and the stone catcher's catched stone. I guess that's what its job is. No one said farming was a glamorous job. Just half six in the morning. Aeration goes on every morning. So it comes off you more slurry in. It's good because then the aeration will be making me slurry consistency. The same, we hope, we're bubbling. It's nice to see an empty ring. Loads to go at. You can see it's dropped it by an inch already by me just opening that door up. Don't drop the GoPro in there, Tom. Gilly, gilly, gilly. Well, look at you with your collars on. You've just seen that video. So I am tanking down the seven acre now. We're in the Hurleyman now. Uh, but we just shut the cows into here. 15 acre, they've not been on for about 20 years, 22 weeks. Oh, sorry, okay, okay. Okay, okay, two seconds. It. Come on! Let's go! Get it! Oh, fit. Oh, baby. Yeah, that is doing it for me. And now the cows are just going to go down there because we are milk recording today. Janet Simpson is here, our top quality milk recorder. Cows coming in nice and steadily. Hey, girl, everyone loves this cow. Whenever they've milked, people have always gone, Can I have that cow? Absolutely not. So the aeration has just stopped for the morning. And look at this, it's like soup. Get that ready for a day of tanking. There she is. I've got two lame cows so I need to do it this morning and then uh, we'll be back on it. You'll see we're in the Hurleyman now because um, Kieran wanted his tractor back, which is very, very fair. The only problem is you'll see we're splashing it on, which is very annoying. I don't like splashing on. I'm a big fan of the dribble bar now, to be honest. And obviously I'm going to graze this field, and this is exactly what I didn't want to do. Well, I think the switch has been faulty. It's not had a light on it for ages, but it's just gone on me, and the dribble bar, all it does is go up and down, up and down, and it doesn't macerate it, so it means it's obviously not cutting onto one or the other. It's a bit annoying, these things happen. And so we're splashing it on. You can really see the splash plate just gets the whole leaf, just gets everything. A bit annoying, because um, we don't want to do that. There we go. At least we have a second option. Is it nice and comfy in the element? Oh, it's doing the job. 
three weeks after we first started tanking. Maybe a little bit longer, actually. How far do you reckon we got? How far do you reckon we got? <gasps> that far? Yeah. There's two problems here. One, it's risen a lot, a lot, a lot. And two, someone's gonna say, Tom, you have a crust on it. I do have a crust on it, and there is a reason for that. We are using separator, but I can't use separator for the last two and a half weeks it's rained galore because there may or may not be a big pile of maize in front of me. And the other thing, Tom, you're gonna to think, Tom, you have a bubbler, which again, you are correct. I found a little hole in the tower. The problem with the bubbler is that I've blocked the hole and it is blocked, so it is stopped uh, leaking. Uh, but the problem with that is if I use a bubbler, it will get rid of my hole. So the idea is to drop this. I'm gonna get the umbilical lads in, or the pipe as some people call it, um, next week. It was gonna go come in this week, but we, uh, they were busy, we were busy, and then I don't want them to spread on a rainy day. So we've got, it looks like it's gonna be a bit dry next week. And we've got probably a week or two of capacity. Yeah, easy. So that's how important the bubbler is, as well as the separator. And we haven't actually bottomed it. I haven't bottomed it this summer. How mad is that? It's been that wet, or oh, got that much going on. Something's happened we haven't bought. Normally, every year I'll bottom it. Normally, after the first cut, if I'm on it, we will bottom it. So it's never had only separated milk. Milk? Funny looking milk. Slurry. So once we the pipe comes in, I'll put the bubbler on to give it a really good stir. So when they do pump it, it's a consistent consistency. Yes, that's right. Um, I'm going to pump it quite far as well because it is quite watery because all this year is, it's just pretty much rain to be, to be fair. I wouldn't want to drink it like, um, but it is pretty much rain. It just shows how important that bubbler is. Oh, there's a bit of plastic there. How important the separator is. So I haven't run the separator, like I say, for about probably three weeks now because obviously I don't want to run it when it's on top of that over there. You'll see it's here very, you'll see it's here very soon. And obviously uh, I spoke to Mastec about why it wasn't doing it. The switch has gone faulty. Okay, so they've sent me a new switch, so I'll swap that over. And fingers crossed, we'll see if that uh, sorts it out because hands down, dribble barred over splash plate any time of the day of the week. And because we separate it and bubble it normally, we don't really get the lines as much anymore as first did. I'll tell you what, what's quite good about this? I've got a bit of got a bit of greenery in my new shed. Guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did you please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to your YouTube channel, you get new TP merch, this is brand new on today, I know it's a little bit dirty, at tompem-farmlife.co.uk, we're now using DVD, can't send to Ireland, or Europe, or America, Australia, just yet, Ireland's pretty much there, but the other ones could be a week, ready for Christmas, and DVD, so it's getting sent in, anywhere between two to four days, and sometimes people are getting it, the day after order, I know, call me Mr. Amazon, guys, thank you very much, hope you enjoyed it, oh, and I heard nothing from my neighbour as well, it was just, it's just weird, because he really likes having the cattle in there, I'm sure he'll be fine, he'll be fine with me, I dribbled about it on, um, and it'll be all gravy, fingers crossed anyway, because you just don't want to fall out with your neighbours, but again, when slurry needs to go on, he needs to go on, imagine if I didn't drop it, how bad would we be? Anyway, right, see you in a bit, love you all.